Today we're going to be doing something that I've had the idea of doing for a long time now. I just have never really had something that would be, you know, good to make it in, I guess you would say. And that is making a fish tower. We're going to be making it out of this vase right here, actually. And we're going to be putting it in the guppy pond. And uh, it's really the perfect, like, pond for it. You always want it to be something really small, you know, some type of little small pond. And all you got to do, what we're going to do is just stack two little walls up of these rocks right here. And then we're going to set the vase. We're going to turn it upside down. And we're going to put it in the water, just, just by a few inches or so. We're going to stick an air tube. Here it is right here. We're going to stick this air tube up in the vase. And we're going to start slowly sucking the air out. And as we do that, the water is going to start rising up into the vase. And fish will be able to swim up in there. This is going to be a guppy pond mainly. So, of course, the guppies are going to be very curious of it. And they're going to go up in it. And you're going to be able to see them from a side view. Instead of just looking at them from, you know, the top all the time. But first, we do have to start stacking the rocks in there. So, let's get to it. So, um, I'm an idiot because I did not notice that the storage actually ran out in the middle of me filming all that. You guys only got to see a few minutes of it. But I did get it, you know, completed and all that. So, I'm about to show it to you guys and, you know, walk you through what I did and all that. But, um, yeah, I ran out of storage when I was filming, filming all of that. And you guys only got to see a few minutes of it. But I got it done. So, here it is. Okay, so, there it is. Now, the little stones that I had in there, they were actually not even, like, on both sides. So, I actually had to take those out. And I found these, like, little slate stones. And, of course, they're even. Put the same amount on both sides. And, um, yep, there it is. So, as you can see, there's water up in there. And you'll be able to see the fish swim up in there. And the water, water's kind of murky because I was, you know, doing a lot of messing around in the water earlier. But, and kind of murkied it up. But, it will definitely clear up, um... Certainly before we get any fish in here. It'll be a good two weeks or so before we get any fish in here. So don't worry about that. But I actually decided I'm going to be doing something a little bit different with this. Because, um, like, these slate stones are just a little bit too big. And I'm actually going to be buying a fish bowl, like a real fish bowl. So it'll be wider and a bigger opening at the bottom. Like, this vase had a really small opening at the top of it, like, where the fish will actually enter it. Um, so, yeah, we need something much bigger than that. So, I'm going to get, like, an actual fish bowl to go in here and change out these little slate stones to something smaller. But something, of course, still even. And this thing's going to look great. It's going to come out of the water even more. Just This was just kind of a test run to see how it would look. But this is going to be something what it's like. What, like, what it's going to look like. And, I mean, I think it's going to look great. I think it's going to look really, really cool when the fish, like, swim up, swim up in it. But all I did was actually just, you know, set it upside down like that. And then stick the air tube up in there. And then start, you know, sucking the air out of there. Now, as you start sucking the air out of there, you're not going to be able to do it in one breath. So, when you stop, make sure you hold... You know the tube closed because the air will start coming back out of the tube if you do not and uh, you'll just start you know it'll start going back down and then coming back up and there's mommy like in every video it seems like but make sure that when you're taking breaks in between sucking the air out make sure that you're stopping the tube like make sure you're holding it closed because if you do not the water's going to start going back down, and you're just going to keep going back up, and then going back down, and uh, you're not really going to be getting anywhere, so make sure you do that. But nonetheless, I think it is going to look pretty dang cool once we get it all set and done how I really want it to look, and also once we get some fish in here, and it's like super crystal clear, which I mean, it's pretty clear right now, but I think it's going to be a really, really cool feature to this guppy pond. Oh yeah, also added this little artificial frog right here. And this little artificial moss plant right there. Just to add a little bit more decor and of course mommy. It's getting kind of dark outside so I'm going to feed the gar and maybe the peacock bass in the morning if he'll eat. I doubt he would just yet but for sure the gar. We're going to hand feed that guy in the morning when, when there's you know much better light out here. Alright dude so it is now the next morning. I've got some shrimp right here. Look at the gar. Look at him. He's coming out right now. We're going to hand feed this guy or at least come really close to it because um... I do not want to get bit because if you get bit by this guy, even with him being only about 12 inches, he will shred your dang finger. They have razor sharp teeth even at this size. So you got to be very careful. You can see him coming out though. I mean, this is crazy to get, to get a guard trained like this, but here we go. I'm going to find a big piece. Yeah, I think this is probably the biggest piece. And check this out. Oh my gosh. Look at this. Got it. Dude, I can't lie. I got a little scared there. Look at him. Running off with it. That is so cool to get a guard trained like that, though. It just took him a few weeks, and that guy has gotten really used to me. As for the peacock, that guy is hiding more than likely back there right now. I don't normally see him go under the drift. What he could be right now, I don't really know, but 
I'm pretty sure he's back there with the catfish. So we'll drop one over here, or two actually, for the catfish to come out and eat. And uh, got one more right here for the gar. And uh, hopefully within about two days or so, the peacock bass will start eating. But for right now, oh, there's a dirt dauber. Okay, he's just stealing all the food. I'm gonna drop two more pieces in here now because I, he just ate both of the pieces that were on the bottom for the catfish. Look at the soft shell up here, Baskin. He's actually sleeping right now. It's so cool to watch this guy just sit up here because he thinks that he blends in with the slate because he looks really similar to it, like his color in the rock. Um, so a lot of times when you walk up to him, you actually will not jump off just because he thinks he's blending in with the rock. Got some unthawed mice here over here. We're gonna go and feed the salter fish. I haven't done that in a minute. Just gonna drop those in. Look at those guys go. Man, they love these things. Just love it. We get a little above feeding right here. Look at them. Look at that. Also, Marky J, your package is all packed up. We'll be sending that out pretty dang soon. Drop some pellets in for the cichlids and the catfish. Oh, yeah. I love it. Look how big these guys are getting and how colorful they're really starting to look now. Look at the catfish down there. Just going crazy. And I purposely put extra pellets in here so they'll get down to the bottom for the catfish to eat. Because if I just put enough of the cichlids in here to eat, then the catfish aren't really going to get anything. Look at how nice that dragon blood is. That guy is going to be one heck of a fish when he gets full grown. And like I've been saying, I am going to be getting some more cichlids for this pretty dang soon. And like some other types as well, but a few more of the types that are already in here, but also a few other different kinds. You know, here's a little fish that I don't think any of you actually know about. This is a little female Curbensis. They got beat up a while back, and I've had her down here in this little tank all by herself. Been healing her back up and all that. So what I'm probably going to be doing pretty soon is moving her out of this tank and back to and back into a normal tank because she's pretty well healed up now. And I'm probably going to put her in this 30 gallon right here. Like this is my tank to put like you know really any kind of fish that's a community fish in here that's you know healthy and you know safe to go in the tank with a whole bunch of other fish. I just love the colors of the electric blue jack Dempsey's though. I mean. It is going to be crazy when these guys get full grown. Look at the butterfly fish. He is out and ready. This was this is what I was talking about with him coming out the front of the tank and doing the little head bobbing thing when he sees me walk over here. Like fish like this, like the gar, you know, like I was just talking about a few minutes ago, how fish that are not normally personable fish, you know, you just gotta train them, you just gotta work with them. And once you do that and they get really used to you, and they turn into fish like this as far as like being used to you and coming out of the tank. So I'm actually out of bloodworms right now, so I've been feeding, you know, these fish the mysis shrimp, but actually the mysis shrimp are a little bit too small for the leaf fish to eat, so what I do is actually feed him some of the Hikari cichlid pellets, and that kind of fills him up. Now, of course, the tetras go after him too, and the electric blue jack Dempsey's, but look at him. I grab one, run down there with it, and go back up there and get another one. Look at that. And that's kind of what I have to feed him just temporarily until I get some more bloodworms because these mice shrimp are just too small for that guy to eat and he just he'll let them go right by them and won't even eat them so I'll go and dump the rest of the mice shrimp in here for these guys and then I'll go and drop another whole cube in here because just this little amount right here is not enough for all these little fish just dump it in makes a little white cloud but that easily just dissipates after a few minutes and look at them go they just go around and pick all of them around and see what I'm saying the leaf fish just let it let them go right by them because he just he knows they're just not really going to fill them up. But. Well, that is pretty much it for now. We made the fish tower. It looks pretty dang good. I mean, especially once we really fix it up. Like I said, this was just kind of like a test run with it. Just to see how it would look and just to see really if it would even work. And it does. It was really easy to make, like I said. But it is going to be crazy once I like really fix it up how I really want it to look, you know, and get some guppies in there. I mean, it's going to be so cool. A really cool feature of the guppy pond. But that is pretty much it for now, though. Be sure to drop a like on the video. Hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel. Go follow my Instagram, fishing underscore PF. I'm starting to post a lot more photos on there of like fish and stuff and you know, fishing photos. If you guys want to see like more fishing side of me, I guess you would say. But with that being said, you guys, I will catch you on the next video. Peace.